hear about the light traveling work today. Thank you, Michel, for the introduction. So, uh, um, so my name is Jonathan Grandidier, and uh, I will talk today about solar cell efficiency enhancement via light trapping in resonant dielectric sphere arrays. Uh, so what you see here in the, in the background represents some, uh, some uh, resonant dielectric sphere uh, that, that we, we place on a, on a solar cell to, uh, to increase uh, its, its efficiency. Uh, so let me first start by, by some basics in, uh, in photovoltaics. So um, here uh, is represented with, with the, the, the blue curve, the, 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 the solar, uh, the, the, the spectral intensity of the, of the AM1.5 solar spectrum. And uh, if you look at the, at the two micron six silicon wafer uh, of a, with, a, with a single pass, we, we just have uh, uh, the, the blue and part of the, the green light that, that is absorbed. And uh, a, big, a big part of the, the, the red light is, is lost, is not absorbed due to the, because the, the cell is too, too thin. So we, we tend to, to, uh, to increase the, the, the thickness of the, the cell in order to, to, uh, to absorb most of the light. But then we have a, a compromise because the, the thicker the, the cell, uh, then the, the, if, if, the, if the carrier are, are generated far away from the the PN junction, then uh, th then the, they are not efficiently collecting, collected owing to bulk re recombination. So uh, we would like, uh, in, in the best case, to have a, a thin cell and uh, and more light, light trapping. We would like to have light trapping in order to to still collect all the all the carriers. Uh, so. Light trapping. So here are a few examples uh, that that we can uh, we can do to have to induce light trapping. So um, here is a, a way. So instead of having some flat uh, interface, uh, Yablanovich proposed to to have some uh, random texturing, and uh, it could show that using this uh, this method of random texturing, we, we could significantly uh, increase the the pass length uh, in the in the in the solar cell and having a thinner cell. And still uh, having many many paths of the of the light to to increase the absorption. Another approach is to uh, consider the the solar cell as a as a wave guide and uh, show that if the if we have a thin uh, silicon in this case crystalline silicon solar cell, it can support uh, several uh, wave guide modes. And uh, of course the, the 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 absorption is done uh, horizontally and. Uh, uh, it could be much more efficient than just having a single pass or a, a double pass due to the, the reflection. And there are some other uh, schemes uh, using some, um, some uh, different, uh, different of, uh, uh, index of refraction. Uh, in this case, we have a, uh, a low index uh, uh, layer in the middle of a two high index uh, uh, layers. And um, this kind of configuration can, can support very... Uh, high density of state, as well as, as in this case, and, and therefore uh, have more interaction between light and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the material. So, um, so another way to uh, induce light trapping is, uh, is uh, to, to use some uh, plasmonic uh, light trapping geometries for thin film solar cells. So there are uh, here three, three uh, different uh, cases are represented, so we can have the, the nanoparticle, the metallic nanoparticle on, on the top in order to, to scatter in, uh, in every direction and therefore increasing the, the pass length of, of the light. We can also uh, think of having uh, localized uh, surface plasmon uh, in, the, in the metal nanoparticle and uh, especially at the interface of the nanoparticle. And uh, some other ways could be to have some uh, also some waveguide mode, as I described uh, earlier, so, or some surface plasmon mode at the, uh, which, which can, could be excited by some, uh, some grating type uh, structure. So, uh, yes? Please remind me, what is the blue color material and what is the red color? Oh, this is, this is just to show the, the PN junction. Oh. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this is, this is the, actually the, the, the active material. Yeah. So um, the, the first generation of, uh, of solar cells were, were usually made of, uh, of crystalline silicone 
of six crystalline silicone and tended to be uh, uh, expensive but relatively uh, efficient. So in order to, to decrease the, the cost uh, of the solar cell, some, uh, some uh, examples were to, to use either thin film or to, um, to, uh, to use organic material which are uh, cheaper. But now what we, what we would really want is to have some uh, cheap solar cell and, uh, and efficient. So some, some cases, some, uh, for example, by using multi-junction solar cells with three or four junctions, or uh, what we are going to talk uh, here more about using nanostructure uh, uh, particle in order to induce uh, light trapping and having a thin film cell too, so we could have a, a, a cheap solar cell but still uh, high efficient. So um, here are some uh, different light trapping techniques. So the uh, one very known is the anti-reflection coating, which consists in having a, a thin layer at the at the surface of a, of the active material in order to uh, uh, decrease the, the the reflection and increase the the absorption in the in the cell. Another uh, method that I described earlier is to have a textured interface. So uh, we have a textured interface at, the, at, the, at both sides of the cell. And uh, uh, in this kind of case, uh, Eli Labianovich could show that um, uh, we could increase the, the pass length up to uh, 4 n square, with n being the refractive index of the active material. Uh, or we can also use scattering particles. Uh, at the surface of the, the cell, either to scatter in every direction or into some uh, waveguide mode. But what I'm going to, to describe today is the use of a, of a resonant dielectric structure so that we place on top of the, the solar cell. So we will see that this structure can support some uh, very confined mode, um, uh, some resonant mode that can leak into the, the active material, the, the, the solar cell. So um, here is the, the outline of my, uh, my talk. So I, I will first show the, um, the, the motivation of using this kind of uh, uh, resonant dielectric structures. Then uh, I will show some analytical calculation uh, of uh, the electric sphere in air. So this is, this is an example of uh, uh, analytically calculated uh, eigen mode of the uh, electric sphere in air. Then uh, I will show uh, how, to, how I did to simulate uh, this kind of structure using a finite difference time domain uh, calculation uh, for both an amorphous silicon solar cell and uh, a gallium arsenide solar cell. And finally, I will uh, show some experimental work that, uh, that I did with some uh, colleagues uh, and some, uh, including some uh, angle resolved measurements. So why do we use uh, the electric nanosphere? So the, one of the reasons is that it's due to the spherical shape. We can expect it to be uh, relatively insensitive to the angle of incidence. Uh, the material used, in this case silica spheres, is, uh, is lossless. So we, we avoid uh, parasitic absorption in the, in the, in the material. Uh, and it's inexpensive. It's made of silica. And uh, the absorbing surface remains perfectly flat, which is uh, an advantage to, to, to have some uh, uh, material with uh, high electro electrical properties. It can be applied after the, um, the, the cell fabrication on a, on a finished uh, solar cell. And uh, I will show that we can expect more than 10% enhancement in the, in the, in the solar cell compared to a, a solar cell which already has uh, an optimized uh, anti-reflection coating. So this is a, a paper uh, by Paul Brown where uh, he, he already uh, put some solar cell on the, on the metallic surface and could show some uh, diffractive coupling into the, the planar waveguide mode formed by the, the 2D chain of, uh, of, uh, of spheres. So here is the, the structure I'm, I'm going to, to describe. So we have a, a thin film amorphous silicon solar cell. So the, the back contact here is, uh, is silver. 
Then we have a, a, a layer of uh, uh, aluminum zinc oxide in order to prevent the diffusion of the silver into the, the amorphous silicon. Then we have the, our active layer, which is a, a thin film amorphous silicon. In this case, it's 100 nanometer. And then on top of that, we have a, a, a thin layer of, uh, of uh, 80 nanometer of ITO of indium tin oxide. And uh, the, the purpose of the ITO, uh, it has two functions. The, the first one is to, uh, to collect the, the carrier. It's a transparent conductive layer. And uh, the, the second one is to uh, act as a, an optimized anti-reflection coating. So uh, this is an already optimized uh, flat thin film amorphous silicone solar cell. And on top of that, we, we place our uh, resonant dielectric structure uh, to, uh, to increase the efficiency of the, the solar cell. So uh, here is some, uh, an analytical analysis of a uh, dielectric sphere in, in air. So uh, as, as we can see on this, uh, this equation, it represents the, the admissible value of the, the wave vector in the, in the sphere and uh, in its surrounding. So when you solve the, this equation for, uh, for a 700 nanometer sphere uh, with uh, the refractive index of, uh, of glass, here is the, the resonant mode that you, you can find and, and calculate. Uh, as you can see, we, it, it supports different order modes. So the, the first order mode, the second order mode, and third order mode, which is a whispering Gary mode type uh, 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 mode when you increase the, the order of the, the mode. And um, for this particular size of, of sphere, you can see that the resonance is around the uh, uh, one, one micron or 700 or 800 nanometer or 600 nanometer and this is uh, particularly where, we, we, where the, the material is uh, traditionally weakly absorbing therefore the, the, this, uh, this resonance at, at these wavelengths can, can be useful to, uh, to increase the, the, the absorption in, in the solar cell this can, this can boost the, the efficiency at these particular wavelengths which are uh, traditionally weakly absorbing. So um, in order to simulate the, the solar cell using some uh, 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 numerical uh, calculation, so the, since, since we have a solar cell, we, we, it's, a, it's a complicated structure, so we use uh, finite difference time domain, F FDTD using a, a numerical, which is a, a commercial software. So uh, the, the first method we, we use with, the, with our FDTD model is to, to place some, uh, some monitor uh, on each side of the, the active material. And uh, we can therefore uh, calculate what, what goes through the first monitor and through the, the second monitor. And uh, just with those two monitors, we can, we can get the absorption in the, the material. So the advantage of this technique is the, it doesn't consume too much memory, and, uh, but we don't have any information uh, inside the, the material. Another technique is to, uh, to have a 3D monitor, or in this case, it's, since it's a flat solar cell, a 2D monitor, where we record the electric field on each uh, grid point of the, of the active material. And uh, considering the electric field and uh, the dielectric constant of the material, we can, uh, we can have the, those values in the steady state and uh, retrieve the, the absorption. And of course, using the FDTD, we, 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 get, we, we should get to the same result. And I verified that we actually have uh, about 1% error. So uh, the advantage of this technique is that we can really see where the, the E-field is, uh, is enhanced, but uh, the inconvenience is that it's very, uh, very memory consuming. So uh, using the, the first method, uh, transfer monitor method, this is the, the, the solar cell that, uh, that I simulated. So by having some monitor in, at the interface of each layer, I could calculate uh, the, the absorption in, in every layer of the, this solar cell. So uh, as you can see, there, there is a lot of absorption in the ITO. All the absorption that is not in the amorphous silicon is, is parasitic. 
and is therefore lost. So the only absorption that we are interested in and that we would like to enhance is the absorption in the amorphous silicon uh, uh, layer. And uh, if we weight the absorption by the AM 1.5 solar spectrum, this is, uh, this is what we, uh, the, the spectral current density that, that we obtain. So uh, the blue curve is the, the sun and the, the green curve is the, this thin film solar cell. As, as you can see here, we, uh, we are missing a lot of, uh, of uh, current in the, in the red uh, part of the, of the solar spectrum. So, um, and in the end, for a thin film solar cell, we absorb about 40% uh, of the maximum attainable value by the, by the sun. So, uh, uh, then if we use the, the other method, if we use the, the power absorption method, so we can calculate the electric field in, in each point of, the, um, of the, 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 the active material, and we get the optical generation rate. And uh, using this method, we get uh, a short circuit current that we will call uh, J photonic of 12.47, which is uh, approximately the same value as the one we, we got using the, the transfer uh, monitor method. But the advantage is, since we, we have the electric field in every uh, uh, part of the active material, we can import it into a finite uh, element device physics simulation software. Here we use Centaur Centaurus. And we can really get the electrical performance of, uh, of the solar cell, of the NIP device, and uh, accounting for the electrostatic and carrier transport properties. And uh, here is the, the IV curve that we can, can get from the, the device modeling. So we have a VOC of uh, about 1 volt and uh, a field factor of uh, 0.8 and uh, a short circuit current of 9.27. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, shorter than the one we, we calculated because here we are accounting for the imperfect uh, uh, carrier collection in the, in the material. So this is a a, most, uh, a more uh, appropriate model. But of course, it, it implies to calculate the E-field in every uh, portion of the, the active material. So now when we want to place some, uh, some dielectric sphere on top of the, the solar cell, this, this becomes a, a more complicated uh, structure. And uh, this becomes a real three-dimensional problem. So uh, here is uh, the, the a top view of a, of a unit cell. So this is, uh, we use some periodic boundary condition for this unit cell. But due to the, the symmetry properties of the structure, we can only uh, uh, simulate one quadrant of the, of the unit cell and retrieve the, the, all the, the properties of the, of the solar cell just by simulating this quadrant of the, the solar cell. But in, in the end, we have really uh, hexagonally close-packed configuration. So uh, if we simulate the, um, the, the, this solar cell with the dielectric spheres on top uh, using the AM 1.5 solar spectrum, here is the, 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 the graph that we get for the optical uh, generation rate. And as you can see here, at 665 nanometers, we have a, a sharp peak for the case uh, which has sphere on top. We verify that this peak is independent from the, the polarization, and this, this uh, represents a strong enhancement compared to a, a flat solar cell. And at this particular uh, wavelength, here is the, the field profile, some, some cross-section of the 3D field profile that, that we obtain. And you can recognize here the, the, the resonant mode that, that we have in the, in the dielectric sphere, so we, we have the, the shape of the sphere. And, um, and uh, here is the E field in the, in the active material. And we can see that this uh, enhancement in the active material uh, is, uh, is also, the, also exists in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the silicon. And uh, because we have an enhancement of the, the E field, we also have uh, of course, enhancement of the absorption and the, and the calculated short circuit current. And you can see that if I do the, the same uh, calculation for a, a flat solar cell, the E field is, is much lower, so this is the, the same uh, scale bar. So we have a significant enhancement of the E field uh, in, the, in the solar cell, 
which has these uh, lossless dielectric resonance spheres uh, on top. And now if we compare uh, the, the two cases, uh, the flat solar cell and the solar cell which, which has a uh, dielectric sphere on top, we can see by using our device uh, physics modeling that uh, we have uh, about 12.3% enhancement uh, for the efficiency from 7.61 to 8.55. As expected, we don't have any uh, uh, modification in the open circuit voltage and uh, the field factor. And um, if we only use the transfer monitor technique, we, we can see an increase of uh, J photonic that is about the same of the, the enhancement of the efficiency. So by th this is to say that by using the transfer monitor technique, we can, we can do a, a large range of simulation without uh, using too much uh, uh, memory. So, uh, so we have in this case about 12% enhancement. So uh, here I, I represented the, um, the, the field profile at, at a cross section of the, the, the sphere. And as you can recognize, if I calculate analytically the, the, the resonant mode of a single sphere in air, we have a resonance at 683 nanometer, which is close to the resonance of the, the dielectric sphere on top of the cell. So of course it's not exactly the same because we, the, the, the properties of the sphere is modified by its environment, by the other spheres uh, around and the, the, the solar cell below. But uh, we, we do have a, a strong resonance at, at this wavelength. And if you calculate the, the same field uh, of resonance, so I chose arbitrarily 747 nanometer, then the, the spheres are, uh, are, uh, look transparent and they, there is no uh, uh, excitation of, of a resonant mode. So um, this is the, the structure. So we do have a, a strong electric field intensity uh, inside the, the, the resonance sphere, but we don't have any absorption. But all the absorption, which, which is uh, normalized here, uh, most of the absorption occurs in the amorphous silicon, in the, in the active material, in this case in the, in the amorphous silicon. So, uh, so this, is, uh, this shows that we, we do enhance the field in the lossless material, but we enhance the absorption in the, in the active material. And then if we, um, if we have a slight uh, modification of, the, of the, the, the spacing between the, the spheres, so I, I, I vary the spacing between 600 and, and 700 nanometer, we can see that the, the, the peak is shifting, showing that the, the, the resonant mode is, uh, is shifting due to the different characteristics of the structure. And if the spheres are too far away from, from each other, then we, we don't excite anymore the, the resonant mode of the, this photonic crystal type uh, structure and the, uh, the, the, the shape of the, 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 the spectral current density is, is very similar to the one we have uh, for a flat solar cell. So I did some uh, very similar calculation for a gallium arsenide solar cell, a thin field gallium arsenide that already has uh, an optimized double anti-reflection coating. And on top of that, we placed uh, 700 nanometer resonant dielectric uh, nanospheres. And as you can see, the, we have several peaks that, uh, that appear in the weakly absorbing part of the, of the gallium arsenide. Some first order, second order, and third order resonant uh, peaks. And that uh, significantly enhance the, 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 the field in the sphere. And by the same, uh, con the consequence is that we also enhance the, the, the short circuit current in the, in the solar cell. And we can show in this case of 700 nanometer sphere that we have a global enhancement of 11% uh, over the, the flat solar cell. So uh, I did a parametrical analysis in order to, to see what was the optimized size of our sphere. And this was indeed uh, 700 nanometer. And what we can see on, on this, this map here, we have this, uh, these resonant peaks which uh, correspond to the, the, the band structure of the, the, the photonic crystal. 
and uh, the reason why the, the enhancement is the highest at 700 nanometer is because we, we have a combination of peak that is more beneficial to the, the solar cell in the, in the red part of the, of, the, of the spectrum. So 700 nanometer is, is the, the optimal value for, the, uh, for the, this configuration of a 100 nanometer gallium arsenide solar cell. And then I, I did uh, a lot of uh, uh, simulation considering different types of, of material, for example, polystyrene, uh, TiO2, and uh, especially TiO2 was, was interesting because it's, uh, since it's a high uh, refractive index, we can consider to embed it in, uh, in another dielectric, for example, in, uh, in EVA, which is commonly used in the photovoltaic industry. And this is the, for all these, uh, these cases, the, 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 the current density that, that we, uh, that we can, uh, can see compared to a flat solar cell. And as you can see here, we have uh, about 20% enhancement for uh, a 600 nanometer uh, polystyrene solar cell and uh, about um, 15% for, uh, for uh, uh, SiO2, uh, 700 nanometer SiO2 solar cell. So I'm going to show now some uh, experimental results using uh, silicon dioxide uh, 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 spheres on top of a uh, of an amorphous silicon uh, thin film solar cell. So the way we uh, deposit our, uh, our sphere on the, the solar cell is by using a, a method called the Longmere blood jet uh, method, which, which is, uh, has the advantage to be scalable. So the way it works is, um, is the following. This is a schematic, and I will show a, a short movie on the, the next slide. So we have the, the solar cell on the surface of the, the water. And on, on this surface of the water, we, we have uh, 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 an array of, uh, of uh, silic silicon dioxide uh, uh, spheres that, that are close packed. So uh, when, we, when the, our solar cell is, on the, is inside the trough, then here this is, this is accelerated 50 times. Uh, we, we withdraw the solar cell from the, from the trough. And at the same time, we, uh, we uh, keep the pressure constant uh, at the surface of the, the water. So the pressure is recorded here. And uh, by doing that, by capillarity, we, we can uh, deposit our uh, resonant dielectric sphere on top of, of our solar cell. And as you can see, as the, um, the, the, the solar cell is, is withdrawn, uh, the, we, we can observe some uh, different color with which correspond to the, the resonant modes on the, on the surface of the, the solar cell. So this, this video took about uh, 45 minutes, and it, of course it's accelerated here, but after 45 minutes we can have on a centimeter scale uh, uh, sample of several, several solar cells, we can have uh, uh, our deposition of, uh, of nanospheres. So this is what, what we obtain in the end. So we have this, uh, this is an SEM image of the spheres on, on top of the solar cell and an AFM image, atomic force microscopy. And you can see on this large, uh, uh, this large SEM image that we have a very scalable process. So uh, the, the, when, when we do a Fourier transform of, of, uh, of this image, we can see that there is actually a, a size distribution which follows a, a Gaussian. So uh, the, the spheres are, um, are not uh, uniform in size, and we will have to account for that in our, uh, in our uh, comparison between the experiment and, and simulation. So uh, at first, we did some, uh, some uh, absorption measurement for uh, a crystalline silicon wafer, so a thick uh, crystalline silicon, to, so we, we could assume that until uh, one micron wavelength, uh, all the, 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 the non-reflected light was absorbed in the crystalline silicon. So we deposited the spheres uh, on top using the Longmuir blood jet uh, method. And this is the, the measured absorption. So we, without, uh, for the flat solar cell, uh, this is the, the absorption, which is in very good agreement with the, the calculation. 
So we have a very good agreement. And, and when we have the spheres on top, here is, uh, here is the, the increase of, of absorption that, we, that you observe. And uh, if we calculate at the median value of the sphere size, we can see that this is similar, but it is not exactly uh, corresponding to our, uh, our uh, experiment. And the reason is that uh, even within this, this short range of, uh, of diameter, the, the, the peak, the, 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 the resonant mode shift. And uh, we are, by, by simulating only the median value, we are only simulating this, uh, this size of sphere. So what, what I did is I, I averaged the, um, the all, all this simulation by the, the, the Gaussian distribution, the, the measured Gaussian distribution of the, the spheres. And here is what we, uh, what we obtained by, by accounting for this Gaussian distribution. We get a very, uh, very nice uh, uh, qualitative agreement between the, the simulation and the experiment. So uh, if we look at some field profile uh, of the of the of the simulation, we can see that the enhancement we observe is is definitely due to some uh, some resonant modes inside the the, the spheres, and uh, as we can see on this simulation, on the for the first part of the crystalline silicon, when we have this resonant mode, we also have an increase of uh, of uh, E field in the in the crystalline silicon rather than uh, on the on the flat silicon. So uh, then I did some angle resolved measurement using an, uh, an integrating sphere. So uh, for every wavelength between 400 and, and 1 micron and uh, between 0 and 80 degrees, and uh, as a function of the polarization, uh, we can see that these bands correspond to the, the resonant modes uh, of the dielectric spheres. So in order to have a quantitative value of, the, of, the, of, of what we, uh, we measure, I considered some, uh, some uh, measured data for uh, a hot and sunny day uh, that were measured by NREL. And uh, I, I weighted it, I, I uh, interpolated um, this data by uh, all the, the number of points that, that I've been using uh, for my measurement. And I verified that uh, at normal incidence, I, I had a similar value as the, as the interpolated data for the spectral irradiance. And, um, and then here is the, the result uh, weighted uh, by my, my measurement. So as a function of, of the angle, we can see that at all angle, the, the short circuit current, uh, the, the, the equivalent short circuit current from the, the absorption is always uh, uh, greater than the, than the one without, uh, without spheres. And this is, as you can see here, if we do the ratio, it's about 10%, uh, 9% uh, uh, average enhancement with a, a maximum uh, at uh, 55 degrees. And as you can see, this is very uh, polarization uh, dependent. But, but I, the black curve is the, the average of, of two polarization. So then I, I did this uh, long mirror blood jet technique on, on a thin film amorphous silicon solar cell. So uh, here is some uh, SEM image of the, the, the deposition. And here is a, a cross section. So uh, we, we, we have our solar cell with a aluminum back contact, then the thin layer of zinc oxide. Then we have here a 280 nanometer uh, PIN amorphous silicon solar cell. And on top of that, we have uh, a, a layer of, uh, of ITO of 70 nanometer. And then we have our uh, 700 nanometer uh, resonant dielectric nanosphere. So we can see that uh, on this large image that uh, the, the process is, uh, is very scalable using our uh, direct deposition with the long mirror blood jet technique. So I did some uh, external quantum efficiency measurement and, uh, and I also accounted for the size distribution of the sphere. And uh, as you can see on, on this graph, I got a very good agreement between the, the experimental measured value uh, of, the, of the solar cell with spheres on top and the simulated uh, uh, accounting for the, the Gaussian distribution of, of the sphere. And in, in global, I got an enhancement of, uh, of about 7% uh, that I did for several uh, uh, solar cells. 
that, that where the, the sphere were deposited from 4.39 to uh, 4.81 percent. So uh, mainly the short circuit current was enhanced, as we could expect, and as we can see on this uh, this IV curve that that I uh, did using a, a solar simulator, and uh, the the short circuit current was uh, uh, almost the same as well as the the, the field factor. So uh, if we look at the, the simulated structure, so in, in the, same, the same way, we, by accounting for the size distribution of the sphere, we can see that the, the resonant modes are, are shifting uh, on the, depending on the, on the wavelengths. And uh, if we look at the, at the case where the sphere has 700 nanometers, we can see several peaks corresponding to the, the different modes. But if, if we weight it by the average distribution, then we have a a very good agreement between the experimental data and the, the simulation. And for three different points here, I uh, represented the, the resonant uh, mode of the, of the dielectric spheres on, on top of the, the solar cell. So this is some uh, angle resolved uh, measurement of the external quantum efficiency. So th these are real uh, uh, electrical measurements. So um, I compared here the, the enhancement of the, of the EQE uh, experimentally and using uh, simulation. So for this simulation, we used uh, RCWA method, so <coughs> rigorous coupled wave analysis, because uh, it, it appeared that uh, FDTD was too time consuming and it was much more efficient to use RCWA. But as you can see, we have a, a very good agreement uh, between the, the, the simulation and the, the experiment where we, we, we have the enhancement on the same region as the, the, the experiment. And uh, this is the, the JSC enhancement. And uh, as well for the, uh, the this is here the, the enhancement that we can see, which is about uh, uh, bet between 5 and, and 9% for the enhancement for a silicone, uh, amorphous silicone solar cell with sphere and without sphere. And as well as for the, the crystalline silicone uh, case, this is very uh, um, uh, polarization uh, dependent. Then finally, uh, as a last experiment, we, we wanted to see if our method could be applied in a state-of-the-art uh, amorphous silicone solar cell. So we, we took a very efficient amorphous silicone solar cell which already has uh, uh, a light trapping uh, uh, inc incorporated, which is in this case uh, random texturing. So uh, this solar cell was uh, above 10% efficient. And, uh, and um, the, 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 the difference with the other solar cell is that it, it has uh, zinc oxide on both uh, sides of the cell, and the, the, the top of the cell is, is very far from the, from the active material. And due to the, the zinc oxide, we, we couldn't use direct deposition on the, on the, using the long mirror blood jet technique. So we had to develop another method based on a transfer printing technique. So uh, we first deposited the, the silica sphere on glass, on the, on the glass slide. Then we used uh, a PDMS stamp into the 2D colloidal crystal formed by a uh, glass slide by Longmuir Blodgett. Then we peeled away the, the PDMS stamp to ink the stamp with, with spheres. Then we pressed onto the, the solar cell surface coated with uh, 500 nanometer uh, PVA. Uh, and then we heat for, for two hours at uh, 100 degree C to, to cross-link the, the PVA and the, the spheres. And then, so this is the, the solar cell, and then in the end, here is what we, we get. We get some our resonant dielectric spheres on top of the on this very high efficient uh, solar cell. So here is the the, the result that we could uh, obtain. So the initial efficiency of the cell was 10.9 percent, and with the dielectric sphere, we could reach uh, more than 11 percent, and the, the, we got a slight enhancement uh, around 500 nanometer and uh, around 600 and uh, the 50, 50 nanometer. And uh, this is the, the IV curve. So uh, we got about 2% enhancement for the efficiency as well as for the, 
the short circuit current. So because the, the spheres were in the, in the far field, we couldn't really uh, consider that, that this enhancement was due to the resonant mode of the sphere, but more uh, due to a, a graded index uh, anti-reflection coating formed by the, the spheres. And we verified that these two uh, enhancement uh, regions were also uh, in good agreement with a uh, transfer matrix method accounting for uh, a graded index uh, anti-reflection coating. So uh, here are some uh, future directions we would like to take using this, uh, this method. So uh, some of the direction is to apply the, this technique on, on a gallium arsenide solar cell, which is uh, uh, very efficient, or on, on a CIGS solar cell. And also another way, another uh, approach could be to use some uh, very high refractive index solar cell and uh, substrate. Uh, with, a, with a low index uh, active layer to, to increase significantly the, the density of state uh, in the active material. And also another perspective is to, to consider these spheres as a graded index uh, anti-reflection coating and to, to see how they, they can be beneficial in, in that way. So as a conclusion, I could show that uh, resonant dielectric structure can significantly increase the light absorption. Uh, here we, we could demonstrate about 7% increase on the thin film amorphous silicon solar cell and uh, about uh, between 5 and 9% uh, for the short circuit current at, at different angles. The material used is, is cheap and the, the surface uh, remains perfectly flat. So uh, I would like to thank my uh, collaborator at, at Caltech, uh, Professor Harry Atwater, uh, Dennis Callahan. Uh, Raymond Weitekamp, Michael Desugli, Professor Jeremy Monday, and Professor Robert Grubbs, and also my collaborator at uh, EPFL in Switzerland, uh, Corsin Bataglia and uh, Christophe Balif. Uh, they uh, they um, provided us the, the thin film amorphous silicon solar cell. I would like also to thank my uh, some of the undergraduate students that worked with me, Colton Bukowski and, and Max Wang. And finally, I would like to thank the EFRC funding and the Department of Energy, and thank you for your attention.